So um, today we are going to talk about Gloria Ansaldúa. Uh, Ansaldúa was born in 1942 and died in 2004. We think of her as a cultural critic uh, and her work spanned a number of disciplines so she's very much um, the idea, she embodied very much the idea of an independent scholar. Uh, Ansaldúa's life was very unusual from, uh, for somebody in the academy. Uh, most of the professors that you will meet um, in college in the United States are uh, middle class, white uh, men and women, uh, and very few of them come from working class backgrounds, and a few of them are also people of color. So Ansaldúa is like an early um, academic in the sense that she tries to work with the academy but she's still uh, at a time when the academy is very very closed up uh, to white people only. Uh, it's not the case today. The US academy is way more open today but there are a number of issues connected with structural reasons, uh, economic mostly, class issues and other issues that prevent people of color to uh, reaching higher ed. So um, you will see that there are some uh, professors of color and many of them are in the bigger institutions in the most uh, in the wealthier institutions because there are very few of them and they tend to get picked up by these prestigious schools. Uh, at UMass we always try to hire faculty of color and we have great difficulties in doing so because the pool is so small. Uh, but anyway, Ansaldúa was part of this, uh, of this group as an outsider. So, as I said, her life for an academic was very unusual. She was born to a ranch owner in Texas and she worked the fields uh, throughout her high school studies. Um, she described herself as being a, um, a combination of indigenous, Basque, and Spanish descent. Um, Ansaldúa's body was highly impacted by uh, health issues since she was very young, uh, probably uh, even before she was born. So she had some endocrinology issues that led her to start menstruating when she was a few months old. And this was such a devastating experience for her body that she had to undergo an early hysterectomy. So Ansaldúa, who has no problem in referring to her own body, her life, her desires, her take on, on the world in general, uh, even those things that we might try not to mention, it said that this was just proof that she was born queer. Um, so uh, health issues, uh, class issues, um, having to work since she was very, very young in brutal jobs like farm uh, work is, she still was able to put herself through school and she obtained a BA in English, art and secondary education from Pan American University. She was also able later on to go to, uh, to college again and this time she got an MA in English and Education from the University of Texas at Austin. But she was not able to obtain a PhD. So uh, because of all these issues that impact her life and the fact that the academy is so white at the time, She's not able to hel hold any kind of permanent positions, so she holds a number of non-tenure track positions at San Francisco State University, at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and at Florida Atlantic University. But even though the academy is turning her back on her, eh, she's able to uh, become a very influential writer uh, especially on issues that uh, involve queerness, feminism, and nowadays also we think of her as somebody who thought about race in a very interesting way. So she co-edited a volume with another famous um, feminist of color, Cherry Moraga, that is called This Bridge Call My Back. And in this book she talks about what it means to be 
a Latina in the United States, uh, what it means to have a body that is somewhat uh, used by both cultures to connect with each other or not. So um, she is recognized in other, in other areas, so she obtains the National Endowment for the Arts Fiction Award in 1991, and finally, after she died, uh, she's awarded a PhD from UC Santa Cruz in 2005. Um, you were assigned today a section of uh, what, what she called the New Mestiza, and there are a number of concepts there that Ansaldua coins and are later on used by other cultural critics of the time. So probably the most important one is the concept of borderline subjectivity. Uh, Ansaldúa, as you might have gathered from her uh, readings, from her writings, is not somebody who believes that um, identity is something that is fixed and unmovable. Uh, so instead of talking about identity, she talks about subjectivity which is a concept that derives from Foucaultian studies, Michel Foucault, the French philosopher that I've mentioned in the past, eh, that um, sort of alludes to the fact that we are subjects of power, that uh, no matter what, what, my, what our human natures might or might not be, if there's even such a thing, uh, we perform for power and we become subjects of power either because we are given incentives to perform in this way or because we fear the retaliation of power if we don't. So she uses this concept of subjectivity which is more fluid than the concept of identity although it more or less refers to the same. She also calls this a borderland subjectivity nepantilism and she talks about being torn between ways. She says that this is the mental state of the mestiza who speaks multiple tongues and is a result of multiple ethnicities. Ethnicity is again a word that we use when we don't want to use race because many of us believe that race was a concept developed by uh, racist um, uh, scientists who believed that there were uh, differences among us humans that went beyond the phenotype, beyond what we looked like, and uh, were actually indication of certain kinds of mental states, uh, capacities, uh, emotional responses, etc. So ethnicity doesn't refer to your uh, genetic makeup, but it refers to uh, the language that you use, the customs that you follow, uh, the ideas that you share with people, the foods that you grew up with, etc. Uh, so this concept of nepantilism, this borderland subjectivity, is perhaps the most important way that Ansaldúa thinks about the state of Latinos and Latinas and others in the United States who uh, feel torn between what you grew up with uh, at home and what you find in the wider world of the United States that is mostly uh, dominated by white people. It's interesting, uh, more perhaps than uh, to hear uh, um, Ansaldúa speak in this way, it's perhaps more interesting than when you hear other people speak in this way, because Ansaldúa inhabits an area, Texas, that used to be part of Mexico until the United States waged war over that territory and took it over. Um, also, that territory obviously was uh, before uh, the territory of indigenous people. So Ansaldúa claims ethnicity and conflicting ethnicities from all of these groups, from the indigenous people that were initially in that area, from the Spanish people, in her case she's talking about the Basques, eh, that colonized those folks, and finally also by the uh, U.S. Um, white people, who invaded that territory and again uh, started a new process of colonization. Um, Ansaldúa thinks that uh, the Latinas, the, the, the this mestizas, have um, some advantages over other people who don't have this uh, painful 
admittedly painful uh, experiences of having to negotiate multiple ethnicities and multiple tongues, and she calls this divergent thinking. Um, for her, divergent thinking is the opposite of the Western binary thinking. If you recall, I think I mentioned in the Marx lecture that Marxism also tried to come up with a different logic to thinking that that binary logic of Western capitalism where things are either white or black, where you are either wealthy or very poor, where you are uh, either young or old, where you are either fully, fr um, where you you have full access to your um, rights or not, it, that black and white, yes, no kind of thinking, uh, and Saldua thinks that the Mestiza is particularly well positioned to challenge that thinking because her thinking is necessarily a thinking that includes diversity and the possibility of contradiction and conflict, which is something that binary thinking doesn't quite uh, understand. For binary thinking, if you have uh, black and white, only one of those two is going to succeed. Instead, Ansaldúa thinks that you need to incorporate both black and white in, in, in order to be able to have a diverse society where a uh, difference is accepted rather than fought and uh, abolished. So um, she thinks that this is something that people with multiracial makeups or multi-ethnic makeups can come up with because of the fact that they grow up in all these different environments and are exposed to all these different um, ways of being in the world. A, another important concept uh, in Ansaldúa, and this is one of the concepts that uh, folks in the queer uh, studies really appreciate, is that she calls herself multisexual. She doesn't call herself bisexual or, or, or homosexual. She calls herself multisexual. And she says that she prophesies her love freely. Um, she's, uh, she said that she has been in love not only with uh, people, but also with animals and a tree. It, so um, she really opens up um, this essential side of her and asks us to not judge her and just to admit that this is a way that people can be in the world, whether we uh, dig it or not. It's not really our thing, right? Who, who cares if Ansaldúa is in love with a tree as long as it's a loving relationship and nobody's hurting anybody? But we would, if we could, probably uh, put Ansaldúa in, a, in, a, in an asylum because of uh, her multisexual uh, thinking. Um, and I'm not saying this out of the blue. I'm saying this because, again, Ansaldúa follows Michel Foucault, who starts studying how we dealt in the West with uh, difference and specifically with madness, what we now call mental illness, how people were set aside during capitalism and how we try to reform them and, and make them healthy, between quotes, again, how this was very different in medieval ages. And he uh, reaches the conclusion that there's a a huge uh, effort on Western societies to normalize so that we continue to produce and behave as the subjects of power that we need to be in order for the states to succeed in harnessing the energies of the population for production and development. Uh, as you can uh, infer, probably I'm a huge fan of Michel Foucault and I would highly recommend uh, his readings. If you're interested, uh, shoot me an email and I'll send you some readings that might be good intro readings. Also, I should make a plug here for STEPIC. We read a lot of uh, Foucault in the STEPIC course seminars, a program where I teach in during the semester. Anyway, uh, advertisements of my program aside, um, we think that the concept of queerness is connected uh, with, the with being a mestiza and with having an indigenous soul. And Saldúa makes this connection very explicit. She thinks that it's at, at the core of being mestiza, this idea that you can accept difference. Um, and she also has in this essay that she read, sort of like um, 
um, almost like a, a cautionary word. She says that the counter stance, you know, when we stand on, on the opposite side and we yell at the other ones and we denounce certain behaviors or policies, it's good, it's a good thing. It's a step towards liberation, she says, but it's not a way of life. We cannot just protest the other culture. She says that we either live in the two shores which is what she is trying to do, right? Be a mestiza in the United States, uh, understand where white people might be oppressing her, but also understand where her own people might be oppressing her. Or you have to abandon white culture altogether. But what doesn't work is being inside and not unjust protest. This is her, her take. Uh, so Anne Saldua had an early death for today's standards. She, as we mentioned at the beginning, her uh, body was extremely impacted by a number of health issues and she also developed uh, diabetes and at the age of 62 she died of complications of this uh, horrendous disease. Uh, and I wanted to encourage you to watch this video which is called The Bo Border and uh, it's uh, a really wonderful short video where you can hear Anne Saldua's words and thoughts uh, over uh, a video that shows images of border crossings.